Hello everyone, my name is Araceli Garcia and I am the secondary ELA TOSA for our district and I just wanted to walk you through some of the resources uh, that you can find in StudySync and also how to find the units and the scope and sequence for StudySync. So let's jump right in. So first of all, you want to get to this uh, site here and it is connected.mcgrawhill.com. Uh, just notice that there are a number of pages called McGraw Hill Connected, so just make sure that the page looks like this. If you already have your username and password, go ahead and log in. If not, you can contact NCS and they will get you your information so that you can log on. All right, once you are there, you're going to do a series of clicks to get to the main page. And what you want to do is click right here where it says California Study Sync ELA. And then it's going to take you to this page where you are going to do the same thing. And this is just to get into the study sync unit. Notice there are other things that you can do here to set up your classes if you want to do an assigned uh, work online. But for right now, it is just to look at the curriculum. All right. Once you are here, you're going to go up here and you'll notice that there again are different uh, things that you can use. Again, if you're using the online version, you can set up your users, you can give them assignments, and there's a wonderful library that I will go over later on. And then uh, again, the one you want to click is right here, the core ELA uh, link. Once you are there, this is where you will find a number of things. Number one, you can find your grade level. Notice there's also an American literature site and a British literature site. Also, you'll find a couple of other great resources, such as your scope and sequence. So if you kind of wanted to get an idea of where to start, which one are some of the uh, works that are in each unit, this might be a great conversation to have in your departments or your PLCs uh, to decide, you know, again, what is the best uh, pacing, if you will, for your units and your school. All right. The other thing I want to point out is this button, these two buttons right here. And this is will take you to your units. And another great resource is right here, your designated ELD unit. And I'll be going over that uh, and show you some of the great resources that you can have to support your English learners. All right, what else do we have? Here, if you scroll on that same page all the way to the bottom, you will have just, again, a, a great uh, resources here. And notice that if you wanted to give your students a little bit more uh, skills development in grammar, or uh, maybe you want to give them an assignment that has to do with speaking and listening, uh, here's a newer one. If you have a uh, newcomer ELs or maybe some of your students who are your uh, emerging or even your bridging students, they can uh, have your, uh, you can give them some of this work here. Let me go ahead and show you more. And uh, there is a page that is called Scope and Sequence. Uh, at your school site, you might want to make some of these decisions of which novel you might want to study, uh, which short works you might want to do. Again, uh, we are not telling as a district what you should be teaching, really. That is a, your decision as long as you are having those students meet those, those key standards and they're developing and progressing in their skills uh, development. So again, if that is definitely a, a decision. Later on, once the committee start meeting again, uh, they will give you more guidelines as to uh, how we're preparing our students for those big state assessments. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at an actual uh, study sync unit. So I'm going to just jump right on over here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you if I was here in my uh, site and I was teaching, let's say, ninth grade, I would go here. And let's say I want to teach my first unit. I'm going to go with empathy and I'm going to go here. And this is the first thing that I would see. Now, as a teacher, I might project this one here. And what this is, it's uh, called a blast. And it's a short. Okay, I'm gonna play all of it, but as you can see, it's almost like a little trailer, uh, so the students, you know, can get an overview of what's going to be in this unit. You can also read this out loud to them. Uh, you can have, you know, students read this out loud. Again, this is a great little introduction. If you scroll down, you'll see all kinds of different things. Uh, that you uh, can click on. I'm just going to go here to instructional path. All right, so let's say I am here and I want to first start with just teaching them about the big, uh, big idea. So there's that little video I told you about. Here again is a lesson plan. Here's some uh, 
student models if you were to assign this let's say I, i'm not too sure if i want to assign it i can click here and get a preview of what the students might see this is again on the student uh, online version and it's going to give them some questions that they can answer right uh, you get to see how everyone is answering you can have them read it there again is an alignment to the state standards uh, notice these again some uh, helpful tools they can start practicing how to annotate let me go ahead and see uh, i'm going to try a different one let's say i want to teach marigolds which is a great little short story again notice uh, i can you know start here definitely i don't have to do all of these skills notice all the different skills that you can take on including doing close reading and some uh, vocabulary work again if i wanted to see what this one has i could go to preview and most of these units have the same type of style, the same type of tools here. So notice it'll be a little video, a little introduction. Then students are actually going to read. They can uh, put it on audio for, uh, you know, for students who might need that kind of support. Uh, so they would read here. Uh, again, notice it is a little bit lengthy, so you might want to break that down. Then there's this great little thing called uh, Study Sync TV. And let's just show you that. Okay, now one of the things I know, uh, the videos are kind of cheesy. Uh, my students thought it was kind of funny to see, you know, uh, these students who are actors. But one of the things that I did is actually had my students do a similar video, uh, but they use Flipgrid. And they basically imitated the same style. They had a little study of the short story. So I would have them in small groups of four. I would have them, you know, look at a prompt, maybe something already from study scene. And they would have this free flowing conversation about what they thought. Uh, notice again, uh, their casual language, they're just exploring the literature and they're doing it in a collaborative way, working on those skills of communication. Uh, again, uh, lots of great things here. Uh, again, uh, down below here, you'll see these little work uh, handouts that you can assign to students. You can print these out and they basically go based on difficulty level. So the rigor, notice again, your standards there. So uh, each access handout uh, changes in its level of difficulty. So if I go here, I could print this one out. If I wanted something uh, a little bit different, notice this one has less scaffolding and uh, more for the student to do. I even have an annotation guide uh, that tells them very specifically what they need to do. There's some of uh, that discussion uh, that they can analyze some questions again so lots of good things here that you can look at uh, again if you want to see what the lesson plan uh, it gives you all kinds you know how long it would take you uh, it even gives you some ELD uh, type of instruction that you can do uh, it even breaks it down by your levels emerging expanding uh, approaching and so forth so uh, you know definitely it can be easy to get overwhelmed with all of this uh, the goal is to Again, play around with this, take a look, uh, do what's comfortable for you. Of course, you know, we want students to be challenged, so finding out what level they're at. Uh, I'm going to just show you a few more things, and that is the extended writing project. So if you want, you know, at the end of the unit, you might want them to write this argumentative piece and notice all of the different parts there, different little mini lessons that you can assign and, and use. Uh, as a, uh, again, PLC, you might want to discuss, you know, what you want as your end of unit assessment. And here's some other end of unit assessments that you can do, uh, again, depending on, uh, you know, your choice there as a school site. So you can kind of explore that. I always still always like to give some enrichment choices for my students. <clears throat> and so I would have them do uh, small projects or maybe a research. And so here, would be also a, a collection of ideas of things that you can assign to your students. So uh, again, a different, lots of great stuff here. Uh, I did want to take a moment to show you the library. Lots of great works here that uh, you can give to students. If you're using the online version, uh, you can filter it in by, again, all different grade levels. You can choose different genres, right? So let's say I'm really into 
mythology, I can go ahead and, and look at the different you know, mythology that's out there. And students can go ahead and, and read this, right? And they can get the full text on the PDF and so many other things that they can do there. So uh, you can spend hours and hours, of course, digging through all of this. We don't expect you to do that. But I hope that this little video helped to find, uh, help you find the resources that are available. As always, I am uh, available to you. You can email me or uh, call me. I am at the Department of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment. And again, this is Araceli Garcia. Thank you so much and good luck.